That was Mark Zuckerberg refusing to stand down as Facebook chairman or say that he has any plans to. He also <coughs> stood by Sheryl Sandberg, his COO, who's been taking some heat for the issues that Facebook has been having. Charlie Gasparino here on that and more. And um, I don't know if anybody expected him to say he would step down as, as chairman, right. and, but he and stays. By the way, the, the record of split you know, having to split uh, yeah. chairman and CEO is pretty mixed. I mean, I've seen crappy companies. Uh, That's that, true. It doesn't that, solve everything. That do, I mean, yeah. Ken Lay was chairman of Enron. Right. Skilling was CEO. Do I need to say anything else? <laughs> I mean, worked, you know worked out well for the two of them. And you know what happened next. Right. So, uh, you know, JB, Jamie Dimon is chairman and CEO of J.P. Morgan, and I... If you look at it, it's a pretty well-run bank. Jack Welch was chairman and CEO of GE no, during right. his years. It was a well-run machine. Yeah, but um, this doesn't seem like it's well-run, at least right now. Yeah, but I don't think that changes it. I, I think there's yeah. other structural things. Listen, they're going to come under a lot of heat, both from Democrats and Republicans. Totally. Uh, you know, Republicans don't like them because they think they're too liberal. Democrats don't like them just from the sort of notion of privacy, and that irks a lot of, uh, of their constituents. Uh, and plus the Russian stuff, you know, right. Democrats believe Russia used social media and Facebook in particular to, to elect um, uh, Donald Trump through, through fake right. stories and fake voter, you know, drives and things of that nature. So that's the sort of vortex they're in. And I don't think changing the CEO and make, just splitting up his job is going to do any, anything to that. I mean, I think what we have to, what, I think what we have to have is really a national conversation to this extent is just how pernicious is there privacy problems. I don't think it's that bad. I don't care if I get food ads pop up. And, yeah, but you know, it depends like on your own personal um, point of view. I, on no, that. but I'm just saying that. How pernicious yeah. really was the Russian threat? I, I still think that if Hillary Clinton campaigned in those those blue states, those purple states that turned red during the election. That uh, may be true. Uh, Minnesota, no, right. I mean, uh, Michigan and, and Pennsylvania. And Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah, he, she probably would have won. Yeah, that um, may be true, but that it had doesn't nothing, mean that these guys aren't going to get a hit, uh, as you say, I, from well, But, I, but I, think, I think there needs to be some rational thought about this. And, um, you know, switch and changing that is not going to change that dynamic, by the way, because a lot of this is still baked in, but we shall see. Stocks bouncing a little bit today, along with Apple, but uh, boy, you talk about being overdue for a bounce. Speaking of uh, bounces, we've seen a little bit of that in oil prices, which right. we were just talking to Andy Lippow right. about a moment yeah, ago. Yeah, great conversation. President I, Trump, yeah, he's good, Andy. President Trump tweeted on oil this morning before um, hitting the golf course, saying oil prices are getting lower. Great, it's like a big tax cut for America and the world. Enjoy. It says 54 was just 82. And then he says, thank you to Saudi Arabia but let's go lower. I mean, this That's is, after yesterday's statement that we talked this about. This is such an amazing story, I think, because it, does, it definitely combines the political international politics with the markets. Because the markets, you talk to any trader out there, the markets are now trading off of oil. That's kind of a big thing. Where it goes, if it goes up, it's better, theoretically, because the economy is getting better. If right. it goes down, it's indication it's not. Trump is, did something, the president did something interesting yesterday. He basically exonerated the, the, the MBS, uh, Mohammed right. bin Salam, for the, for the murder, which we know he's tied to, of the journalist Khashoggi. Right. Um, he did it on the grounds of we have a good business relationship with Saudi Arabia, including potentially lower oil prices, but also selling them of arms. It seems like a crass way to conduct international affairs. Well, one of the things that's affairs. interesting about it is sometimes we have to read between the lines to figure out that right. something like that happened. And in this case, we didn't. He came right. out and said it. He says the economic right. relationship we have right. is essentially more important. And, and, this, and, and this morning he doubled down on that saying yes. they would lead to oil, lower oil prices. But guess what? You just had a guest on who understands the oil markets say they're, they're still going to cut production and they're going to send oil prices up. Isn't that something when you so, think about it? But think about it. President Trump basically said it's all right to kill a journalist and the Saudis are basically saying we're still going to cut prices. Well, they didn't say they're, they did We don't know what they're going to do. They're still going to cut production. We don't know if they're going to cut production. But, they're but Andy's to. point was that they probably they still have to. Will. They have to. It's in their economic then interest. And what does he do, by the way? Because he didn't. There was no response this time I, around. What does know, he do then? I, I can't believe the president actually tied, you know, the sort of culpability of someone for a murder, which we know occurred, and we know it had connections to the crown prince to that directly to an economic business issue because you always look bad when you do that and they can always renege on a, on a promise particularly when it comes to oil production particularly at a time when their economy needs higher prices he, and it, yeah. it's really it's really it's really dumb and uh, you know he kind of got himself into this i don't know how you ex ex you know extract yourself from it and you know if you look at why republicans lost the the midterms um part of it was uh suburban people, suburban yeah, educated yeah, people. We've talked a lot about that. And when they hear stuff like this, particularly suburban women who are nominally Republican, they, they say he just tied you know, a, a cut in gas prices of three cents maybe to some guy's murder. Well, he's betting on the fact that the, um, 
you know, that the lower oil prices or the lower gas prices is uh, is so You know how you get lower gas prices? You think. frack. We, we, have, we, have, we don't need that. By the way, as a quick note, we got to go. Um, right. The oil prices can't be too low for that to keep working either because those guys to right, make money true. at fracking. I was talking to a guy the other day. He's Financing they, it takes they that's need right. higher prices. They, they need prices probably in the mid-40s. The guy was telling me right. to make it make sense. So that's another part of this, which Andy also talked about. Thank you, Charlie. We'll talk to you okay. again.